The Samsung of today is a Samsung that's well known for its mobile technological brilliance. Their upcoming flagship, the Galaxy S8, is easily one of the most highly anticipated smartphones of the year. And that's because people are beginning to look towards Samsung for smartphone innovation and perhaps even a glimpse into the future of mobile computing. But it wasn't always like this. When Samsung started the ball rolling on their famous Galaxy S lineup all the way back in 2010, they certainly weren't revered the way they are now. Here's a look at how this South Korean electronics giant got from that to this. In 2010, the world was very different. Android was still pretty much in its infancy, and the biggest name behind Google's mobile OS was HTC. Then along came Samsung with their Galaxy S, and it was super impressive. For starters, it was insanely quick. It came with a single-core Hummingbird processor clocked at 1GHz with a whopping 512MB of RAM. I know that sounds ridiculous in 2017, but back then, it was as fast as you got. That meant that the Galaxy S zipped through tasks with minimal effort, impressing everyone. The Galaxy S also had a stunning 4-inch Super AMOLED display and was the world's thinnest phone at that time. However, it wasn't without its flaws. The build, for example, was plasticky and paled in comparison to HTC's flagship Desire and the iPhone 4. It also had subpar battery life from its 1500mAh cell. Still, that didn't stop people from buying it. Globally, the Galaxy S was a commercial success, selling over 25 million phones. It was so successful that even Apple felt the pressure and filed a massive lawsuit against Samsung which saw battles last for three years across the globe. Safe to say, the Galaxy S was a good starting point, but Samsung really hammered home the point that they were here to stay when they launched its sequel. In came the Galaxy S2. The Galaxy S2 bumped up the specs, so it was even faster, featuring a dual-core Exynos 4120 processor clocked at 1.2GHz paired to 1GB of RAM. Yet somehow, despite this power, it also managed to trim its thickness down to just 8.5mm, which is really quite stunning. It was no surprise then when the phone quickly became a crowd favourite, moving over 40 million units. However, there were some nagging issues which continued from the original Galaxy S, like its plasticky build that would continue to haunt Samsung's flagship line for years to come. After the success of the Galaxy S2, Samsung's Galaxy S3 had some big shoes to fill, and for the most part, it did. Of course, the new phone came with a boost in performance, upping the processor to a quad-core chip. But beyond a spec sheet enhancement, the Galaxy S3 was the start of Samsung's goal to cram every feature they could into the smartphone. The Galaxy S3 was the start of questionable features like Smart Stay, which would keep the screen on as long as you were looking at it, and a whole bunch of motion features too. It was also the device Samsung debuted its S-Voice personal assistant that was designed to take on Siri, which ultimately didn't work out too well. But perhaps the most questionable design feature was Samsung's insistence on a designed-for-humans approach with the smartphone. This feature cramming continued with the S3's successor, the Galaxy S4. Unfortunately, the Galaxy S4 was also considered one of the worst Galaxy S devices ever launched. Although the phone was still fast and pretty high-end, it maintained a plastic body, only this time it was filled with bloaty software nobody asked for and even more device features that were more than a little gimmicky. Stuff like eye tracking and hover detection as well as the whole tilt to scroll web pages thing were cool party tricks but they never actually found practical use. The S4 was even more disappointing in Malaysia because its initial release saw the device come without 4G capabilities and a bad battery life. It wasn't until the second variant came along that fixed both those issues. Still, the S4 was the first Galaxy S device to come with a stunning high-resolution 5-inch Super AMOLED panel with over 440 pixels per inch. 
Thankfully, when the Galaxy S5 rolled around, Samsung learned their lesson and cut back on some of the unnecessary software features on the S4. Instead, they replaced it with hardware features like IP67 water resistance and a heart rate monitor, all while maintaining the device's removable back cover, battery, and micro SD slot. It even had an odd fingerprint scanner that required users to swipe down on it to unlock. The result was actually a worse combination than most might think. Because of the design choice, Samsung had to secure its ports with a flap to keep the water out, something that was pretty old-fashioned, especially considering HTC's Butterfly 2 could achieve water resistance without the need for flaps. This desire to keep all the hardware features also sacrificed on the device's build quality. During a time where flagships from Sony and perhaps most notably the HTC One M8 featured absolutely gorgeous metal or glass builds, the Plasticky S5 was a big letdown. However, despite the limitations of both the S4 and S5, these two handsets were commercial successes selling tens of millions of devices worldwide, setting new sales records for the South Korean giant. And then, Samsung went and did something absolutely spectacular with the follow-up Galaxy S6, something nobody expected. They took a step back, listened to what their customers were saying, and made one of the most drastic changes yet to their Galaxy S line. The result was a smartphone that came in a gorgeous glass and metal body, catapulting Samsung's flagships to the top of nearly everyone's premium flagship list. It was absolutely stunning, and with the inclusion of the downright beautiful Galaxy S6 Edge and its dual-edge curved screen, carved a unique form factor for Samsung's flagships that remain even to this day. It also took Samsung's hardware game to the next level with a Quad HD Super AMOLED display that pretty much set the benchmark for smartphone display technology, doubling the pixel density of the original Galaxy S. The S6 also featured an amazing camera experience with its 16MP primary shooter, launching it to the top of many smartphone cameras' lists. However, it did come at some cost. Water resistance, for example, was omitted and so was the micro SD card slot for expandable storage. This predictably led to some complaints from Samsung's fanbase, but in retrospect, I think that Samsung made the right choice. Because last year, when the Galaxy S7 and S7 Edge came out, Samsung had damn near made the perfect smartphone. It had class-leading performance in the form of a brand new Exynos 8890 octa-core processor mated to 4GB of RAM. It had water resistance, it had a micro SD card slot, it had dual SIM support, it had a mind-boggling Quad HD Super AMOLED display. And perhaps most importantly, it has one of the best cameras ever put into a smartphone. That 12 megapixel dual pixel snapper is a thing of marvel and remains strong even to this day. Samsung's Galaxy S lineup has grown spectacularly over the years. For a line that started out as a reactionary move to compete in the smartphone market has now grown to be a class leader in nearly every aspect. And if the rumours are to be believed, it looks like Samsung's not done yet. Their upcoming flagship Galaxy S8 is looking to rewrite the rulebook once again with an all-new AI assistant, a bezel-less design that ditches the company's classic physical home button and the same amazing build quality that started with the S6. Samsung is also rumoured to showcase their take on the 18x9 aspect ratio display with a larger 5.8-inch panel in the body that could potentially be smaller than the S7 edges. Iris scanning has also been discussed, with rumours hinting that it would be even better than last year's Note 7. Some even suggested that it would completely replace the need for a fingerprint scanner. And finally, we have the S8's camera, which has been rumoured to allow users to shoot up to 1,000 frames per second in slow motion. This seems like the shakiest rumour, but who knows? It's really interesting to see how far this company has grown its flagship smartphone lineup, and I, for one, am incredibly excited to see what Samsung has in store for us next. Are you?